morning and welcome to your 2021 annual meeting. With that, I'll turn it over to, I'll call the meeting to order and turn it over to Larry for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Next up, we have the invocation, Kevin Tullis. Today's devotion is called Navigating the, the Storms of Life. On July 16, 1999, a small plane pilot, piloted by John F. Kennedy Jr. crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. Investigators determined the cause of the accident to be a common error which occurs when due to poor visibility, pilots become disoriented and forget to rely on their instruments to help them successfully reach their destination. As we navigate life, there are often times when life gets so overwhelming, we feel disoriented. A cancer diagnosis, <clears throat> the death of a loved one, a job loss, a betrayal by a friend, Life's unexpected tragedies can easily leave us feeling lost and confused. When we find ourselves in these kinds of situations, we might try offering the prayer Psalm 43. In this psalm, the psalmist is overwhelmed and feeling lost because he feels surrounded by evil and injustice. In despair, the psalmist pleads with God to provide his sure guidance to help him safely navigate through the situation to his desired destination. In God's presence, the psalmist knows he will find renewed hope and joy. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, as we gather you <clears throat> before you today, we face many challenging circumstances. As individuals, as a co-op, and as a nation, <clears throat> we thank you that your presence is always with us and we ask for your guidance as we make decisions. We pray for the safety of our linemen and our fellow citizens and military in harm's way all around the world. Help us to rely on you to guide us in, <clears throat> in the right steps. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I would like to introduce your Board of Trustees. District 1, Gary Snowd. District 2, Diane Brown. District 3, District 3 is currently vacant due to the recent resignation of Harold Barber. District 4, Harold Sutton. District 5, Kevin Tullis. District 6, Robert McCourt. District 7, Todd Brown. District 8, Frank Cherko. And District 9, William Casper. Next, I will turn the meeting back over to Kevin Tolis for the notice of the meeting. Official notice, the annual meeting of members of Carroll Electric Cooperative Incorporated will be held virtually from the Carroll Electric Boardroom on Saturday, August 28, 2021 at 1030 a.m. to take action on the following matters. One, the reports of the officers trustees in the nominating committee. Two, election of three trustees of the co cooperative, districts one, four, and eight. Three, all other business that may come before the meeting or an adjournment thereof. Uh, now to give an update on our scholarship and youth tour. As a not-for-profit electric cooperative, Carroll Electric follows the seven cooperative principles one of which is commitment to community. Part of that commitment involves supporting our area students. This year, we were able to grant $6,000 scholarships to el eligible students based on their scholastic achievement, community involvement, and personal interviews. Winning $1,000 scholarships in this year's competition was Emma Bodo of Carrollton, Rebecca Stoneman of Carrollton, Troy Lane of Carrollton, Paige Pashina of Malvern, Emily Seidel of Sheridsville, and Hayden Binkowitz of Amsterdam. 
Emma Boda was chosen by the judges to compete at our statewide competition against students representing other Ohio Electric cooperatives. She won an additional $1,200 scholarship from this competition. Carol Electric also supports our youth by participating in the Rural Electric Youth Tour to Washington, D.C. This tour visits locations such as the nation's capital, famous and historical sites, and often includes in-person meetings with members of Ohio's congressional delegation on Capitol Hill. Grace Leslie of East Township and Jesse Kramer of Harrison Township, who both attend Carrollton High School, were chosen to represent Carroll Electric in the 2020 tour. That tour, as well as the 2021 tour, were both canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have now given Grace and Jesse the options of attending the 2022 youth tour or accepting a $1,000 scholarship. We hope that the 2022 youth tour can safely resume next summer. Now I'll turn it over to Larry Fenbers to discuss our People for People Fund report. 50 cents is the average amount a Carol Electric member donates to the People for People Fund each month when they round up their electric bill. That's not enough to buy a cup of coffee, yet when we add it all together, it makes a difference. Members who participate in the program uh, round up their bill each month to help meet the charitable needs of members in our six county service area. Today, I am proud to share with you the financial impact that you have made on our community. In 2020, grants totaling $33,000 were awarded to individuals and organizations. Since the beginning of 2021, the People for People Fund has provided $16,000 in charitable donations. Your pocket change has allowed us to provide $904,378.71 to those in need since we began the program in 2000. On behalf of the People for People Board, thank you for participating in the Roundup program. Together, we are making a positive impact in our community. And now I will turn it over to the board chairman, Harold Sutton. Thank you, Larry. Now for action on the minutes. The minutes were printed, printed in the Cooperative Living Magazine. We have not heard any remarks on that. So from those here, I need a motion to accept the minutes as printed. I make that motion. A motion by Larry, seconded by Bob McCourt. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. The minutes are approved. Now for my remarks. Good morning again and thank you for your participation in the, our annual meeting. I would like to thank you, the members, for your kind remarks and the staff here at Carroll Electric for their hard work and dedication. This year we had the highest marks ever on the ACSI score. ACSI, or American Customer Satisfaction Index, rates companies on customer satisfaction. We scored 83 compared to AEP with a score of 70. You can go on the ACSI website and see how this compares to the companies that you do business with. Now I'd like to take you on a little journey. You just got home from work and you are tired. Your job requires you to wear fire retardant clothing, long pants, long sleeves, special boots and heavy gloves. It feels like the temperature was around 100 degrees. You're ready to sit down and enjoy a good meal and you hear the phone ring. It's work calling you to inform you that someone is out of power. It's storming on the other side of our service territory. Lightning striking all around and it's raining hard. You leave to go to the work site and put the wires back together and you think if lightning hits these wires even a mile away, I'm done for. Your mind flashes to your family who you just heard is out of power now also. You can't get to them because another larger outage takes priority. This ju doesn't just go on all night, it can go on several days or all week. 
Larry shared with me, with the storms this month, some of our linemen had in excess of 67 hours of overtime. That's over their 40 hour normal work week. What I'm trying to say is, if you encounter a lineman that's a little grumpy, cut him some slack. Show him some respect. If you were in his shoes and workwear for the last several days, I bet you'd be grumpy too. My wife says I would be. Now I'd like to praise Larry and his management team for their quick action in imposing COVID-19 protocol. The couple of cases we experienced at the co-op were not acquired at work, and no one at Carroll Electric had to be quarantined from being in contact with anybody at work. They certainly made the best of a very difficult situation. I would now like to thank Harold Barber for his 14 years of service on Carroll Electric's Board of Trustees. Harold has decided to resign from the board on Monday, August 23rd. The seat for District 3 will remain open until the trustee election next year for Districts 3, 5, and 6. I would also like to commend Frank Churko on 15 years of dedicated service on this board of directors. Frank has decided not to seek another term. My swell, myself, as well as the rest of the board, will greatly miss Frank's perspective. I want to give him this plaque commemorating his 15 years of service and a gift card as a small token of our appreciation. Thank you, Frank. With that, I'll turn it back over to Larry. Good morning and welcome. I know many of you enjoy attending our annual meeting at the fairgrounds and all the activities that it encompasses. As we witnessed last year, no one could have predicted what was coming, a worldwide pandemic. We had to make major changes to the way we live our lives and the way we conduct ourselves. Here we are a year later and we're still being impacted. Last year, the decision to, make, to cancel the in-person meeting at the fairgrounds and hold our first ever virtual annual meeting. I know this is very different, watching from the comforts of your home on a computer screen, no displays, food, prizes, and demonstrations, but one benefit, it's much shorter. We certainly hoped to be back in person this year, but we had to make the decision several months ago about what to do. With the safety of our members and employees at the forefront of that decision, we decided to again hold a virtual meeting. Since that decision was made, we've seen easing of many of the restrictions and more and more people being vaccinated. The code number of COVID cases dropped. We even reopened our lobby and lifted the mask mandates at the office. Unfortunately, locally, we are seeing increases in case numbers and some businesses are reimposing mask mandates. Our county still trails in vaccination rates compared to other parts of Ohio and the nation. One of the primary functions of our annual meeting is the election of trustees. This year, Frank Cherko chose not to seek re-election. Three candidates are running for that seat. Fortunately, several years ago, you voted on bylaw amendments that provided more options in how you vote and elect your trustees. Because of that, we were able to have members vote online, by telephone, and by mail. So despite a worldwide pandemic and hosting a virtual meeting, we have seen record numbers in the turnouts of our members voting by these alternative methods. The election results will be announced later at the end of the meeting, along with the winners of the energy credits from all those who voted. A financial report was included in this month's Ohio Cooperative Living Magazine. One positive note from our 2020 financials is that we returned over $326,000 in capital credits to our members. We also finished 2020 with a good financial position and positive margins. We weren't sure how this pandemic would impact our financials as we waived late fees and worked with members who struggled to pay their bills. 
Based on that uncertainty, we applied through the Small Business Association for a loan through one of their COVID relief programs. We received $440,000 through this program. This loan turned into a 100% was turned out to be 100% forgiven and became a grant. This allowed us to avoid a rate increase for 2021. While the COVID pandemic has impacted our business in many ways, the employees pushed through dealing with changes in the way we operate and continued providing affordable and reliable service to the members. We dealt with a closed lobby and handling of more of our members' interactions through our drive through and the phone. The linemen dealt with varying schedules, reporting locations, separate vehicles, and working while socially distancing. In June, we were able to lift many of the restrictions and get back to a more normal work environment. We have fared well in our mission, keep the lights on, yet protect our employees from getting and spreading the virus. We are dealing with material shortages, delays, and cost increases. This has forced us to better plan our anticipated work and adapt. I'm sure many of you have experienced shortages of materials and seen the increased cost, especially in the construction areas. Lead times for wire, cable, and transformers continue to increase in duration as well as the cost for these items. In terms of service reliability, last fall we worked with AEP at our Sugar Grove substation to install motor operated air brake switches. This helps speed up the restoration times in the event of an outage. This past spring, we replaced the transformer at our Merrick substation. That combined with rebuilding the Leesville circuit out of the Leesville substation and the Sherridsville circuit out of our Merrick substation improved the tie capabilities between the Leesville, Merrick, and Atwood substations. For our right away program, this year we are working in the Leesville, Merrick, and Atwood substation areas. In February of last year, we had another strategic planning session and later in 2020, finalized the goals and initiatives to focus on for the next couple of years. Many of these focused on employee training and development, reliability, and member communications. I would like to take a minute to talk about the employees. I am happy to report that we completed the past year without any lost time accidents. Our line of work presents some very hazardous conditions. We strive to keep all of our employees safe. To help with this focus last year, we hired a shared safety consultant, Jim Myers. Jim is splitting his time between Carroll and another cooperative. If you see him, please welcome him. In addition, we have three employees that are selling their 25 year anniversaries with Carroll Electric. Normally at this time, I would introduce them and uh, rather than do so in person, I'm just gonna introduce them by name and have a picture of them shown with their names. They are Tom Schultz, Sherry Noble, and Tracy Bueller. And with that, I would like to recognize the staff and your board of trustees and thank them for their work throughout the past year. Thank you. And now I will turn it back over to AJ for the nominating committee report. Nine of your peers, member consumers just like you, were tasked with finding qualified and willing candidates to run for the Carroll Electric Board of Trustees in districts one, four, and eight. The committee first met February 24th for instructions and to receive our membership listings. Our nominating committee then looked at character, education, skills, and experience when approaching members to run for the Board of Trustees. When we returned for our March 24th meeting, the nominating committee made a total of five nominations. Those nominations were, in District 1, incumbent Gary Snowd of Brown Township ran unopposed. In District 4, incumbent Jake Sutton of Ross Township ran unopposed. And in District 8, Travis Ha of Rose Township, Vince Carter of Harrison Township, and Dan Meenan of Harrison Township. A member of District 8 called Carroll Electric to express his interest in running for District 8. According to the Carroll Electric Code of Regulations, the nominating committee is only able to nominate a maximum of three members for one district. 
The nominating committee took a vote for their top candidates, resulting in the nomination of Ha, Carter, and Meenan. Following the meeting, the member was explained the petition process, but decided to no longer run for the board. I'd like to thank each nominating committee member for their dedication to the cooperative in searching for trustees. Our nominating committee plays a large part in one of our seven principles, democratic member control. If you have more questions about the nominating committee or how to run as a trustee, please feel free to contact me at 330-627-8536. Thank you. Now I'll turn it over to Larry Fembers to introduce our board candidates. Normally at this time, I would introduce the candidates and ask them to stand up. Since we are doing a virtual format and in keeping with our COVID protocol, I'm going to introduce the candidates and then we will, in the, the video here, present a picture of them. District 1, Gary Snowd. District 4, Harold Sutton. District 8, Vince Carter. Travis Haw. Dan Meenan. Now I will turn things back over to Harold Sutton. At an in-person meeting, I'd, and the way we used to vote, I'd now call for a motion to close the voting, but the voting by, we've hired a company to run the voting for us, so it's completely out of our hands, and the voting was closed Friday the 20th, August 20th at 12 noon. So with that, then I would ask if there is any unfinished business to come before this body, Seeing none, is there any new business to come before us? Seeing none, we'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion to, from Bob McCork to adjourn. We are adjourned. With that, I'll turn it back to uh, Larry uh, to handle the prize drawing and the rest. At this time, I am going to address the attention to a video by Keith Harden of Co-op Ballot. Keith will present the election results. Hello, my name is Keith Harden and I work for eSpace Communications. We provide Co-op Ballot, a service that's available for electric cooperatives to conduct their elections. We've been doing it for over 20 years. On August 20th, the Carroll Electric Cooperative election closed for 2021. All ballots have been tabulated, verified, and certified. The winner in District 1 for this year is Gary Snowd. The winner in District 4 is Harold Sutton. And the winner in District 8 is Vince Carter. Thank you very much. To record our members' attendance for today's meeting, we asked for co-op ballot to send us the account numbers for our members who voted. The names of which members voted or who they voted for was not shared with us. Using the account numbers, Everyone who voted will receive a $5 bill credit to their account. These members will also have a chance to win additional bill credits, which we will begin now. We will have four $50 bill credits, credit winners, three $100 bill credit winners, two $150 bill credit winners, and two $250 bill credit winners. After the meeting, we will look up the account numbers and call the members who won. Now let's get started with our drawing, beginning with our four $50 bill credit winners. I'm good. All right. I have 601501 253902. 482102 and 402003. So, congratulations for our $50 bill credit winners. Now, we will draw for our three $100 winners. And for that, I have 818109, 127100. And for our last, uh, 372103. Now for our two $150 bill credit winners. 
169902, 199307. And lastly, our two $250 bill credit winners. I have 38102, 460604. Thank you for attending your 2021 annual meeting.